I rely on three, two. Boy, is it windy out there. <laughs> Bazinga. But I tell you, it was all worth it for that brand new video game I just picked up. So why don't we uh, pop it in? Now that's a nice graphic. Wow, I have no words for that. Let's try some more. Wow. Huh, I don't remember that graphic. Probably nothing happened. Now that's what I call some pretty pixels. <laughs> oh man. Wish I could fucking play it. In the vast sea of critically acclaimed 9 out of 10 video games that feel a bit more like 3 out of 10 chores, there's one thing that they all share in common, and those are like the crazy beautiful AAA graphics that companies will pour a brazillion dollars into before dropping like 20 bucks in the actual gameplayer's story. I'm talking the 4K textures, the bloom. Can we get more bloom? More bloom? There we go. I'm talking the god rates, the chromatic abrasions, whatever the fuck DLSS is and everything else on the list. And take it from me, I'm a huge sucker for that like depth of field, lens flare, like I, I love all that stuff, man. I mean, it is crazy to think that only 10 years ago we had games that look like that, to games that look like this. We have photorealistic landscapes now with actual actors doing motion capture that are leaving us with a <laughs> But as much as it pains me to say this, these graphics are coming at a major expense to game design, and some of them are actually leaving us with less memorable and enjoyable experiences. It's, it's literally getting to the point where the only reason we buy these games are the graphics. And that's assuming the game even works in the first place. God, I can't even watch like an E3 trailer nowadays without hearing that kitchen nightmare sound effect, because we know it's going to be fake marketing bullshit. And I'm realizing I haven't said anything of substance yet, so let's dive into the video. So for us to understand how graphics are posing a major threat to gaming, we have to go... All the way back on the Laura Croft titty timeline. See, back in the day, graphics played a major component into the sales of a video game. No shit. The reason being, the changes from the SNES and the N64, even from the PS2 to the PS3, the games on those consoles had to be expressions of those consoles' power. Mario, do not come to the castle. I baked an absolute dog shit cake. Just completely fucked it up. I'm so sorry. Peach! It used to be critical for gamers to look at an E3 trailer and only think to themselves, Whoa, that comes. It was that emotion that sold a ton of sequels and new IPs. But uh, that's not really the case as much anymore. Like, absolutely, the differences from the PS4 and the PS5 are there. Or the Xbox One to the... The, the new one, Xbox Two or something. People aren't gonna drop like 60 bucks on a Twinkle Dink McFuckface's adventure, you know, just because it has nice graphics. And as much as I despise them, Nintendo figured this shit out years ago. They proved to the market that people don't need to buy like Nvidia 6090 G-Suck gay tracing cards just to enjoy a game. All you need is some solid gameplay and a little bit of pizzazz. Pizzazz. And before you know it, you've got that Nintendo magic again. And it's such a shame to see AAA Studios like not figure this one out. Or maybe they have, and they just can't do shit about it. You see, when developers aren't too preoccupied with kicking back in their Bill Cosby suite doing... <laughs> don't say gamers don't know how to party. They're busy putting a galactic amount of resources into their graphics just to stay on par with their previous releases. This leaves zero room in the new ideas department for the game design. So much so that literally they had to make World War II 2. 2. 
This time it's personal. So before these companies even focus on the actual gameplay or story on the games, they're spending an unbelievable amount of time and energy on just making their graphics look realistic. I had more fun in Splitgate than I did in Cold War just because the gameplay was more fun. Sure, the graphics looked more realistic, but it didn't really add to the game. If anything, it detracted. I couldn't see half the enemies I was trying to shoot in the darker areas of the game because the black point was so high and there was a little contrast and there was just so much going on. It actually made it hard to see. I, I sound like a fucking old person right okay, now. But let's get like, you I'm, back. I'm, it's true. So while AAA studios are focused playing catch up on their previous releases, it's now up to indie developers to make walking simulators about depression. I mean, walking simulators about depression. I mean, walking simulators about depression. I mean, just kidding, I absolutely love indie games, but as much as I dick ride Outer Wilds, it's so rare to see a studio like this actually come out with a 40 hour fully fledged game based on their own unique concepts. And they still tend to fucking still make just walking simulators about depression. Okay, everything I've said up to this point could be labeled as no duh. But that's one side I have to talk about before I get to this side. And that's our mental perception of the graphics that we see today. See, one of the first things we have to understand is that there's a massive difference between graphical fidelity and graphic aesthetic. Things that are harder to render aren't necessarily more pleasing to look at. You don't have to go far to see examples of this. I mean, look at any animation adaptation, any work that was taken from the animated world into the real world, and there's just always something missing. The charm from the original is never in the live actions. The reason that more stylized graphics can get away with this is that it doesn't take as much for them to look real to us. While they may not be realistic, they can often feel more real because we're not trying to draw comparisons into how they would actually look in our visual realm. Disgusting. Who did this? Anyone? If you were to take these more stylized characters out of their natural world, they'd end up just looking like your average California citizen. No one wants that. And the reason I bring up stylized graphics is that it helps us understand a key component of how our brains interpret visuals. See, our eyeballs take in about 10 to 11 million bits of information every second. Yet our brain can only process about 50 of those bits. And I'll have the study in the description. The more visual detail there is in an image, the harder it is for the brain to interpret and ingest what it is seeing. There's a hard limit on what I can perceive on a screen versus what I can actually remember being there. When you have a more detailed game world, it's harder for us to quickly take stock of everything that we're looking at, and we kind of revert to more basic internalizing functions, which are just try to grasp what's going on on screen and make sense of it. And this is where stylized graphics play an important role. See, there's a reason why all the games from the N64, the PS2, GameCube, etc., felt far more memorable is because we were presented with far less complexity. You had objects that had way less polygons. You had way brighter, more vibrant colors, greater contrast, and less objects in your environment. If you're in a room and there's only only two pots and a fucking torch, you're gonna remember that. You're probably gonna need to use it too. And we can actually go a step further. Our brains break down almost everything we see into tools and obstacles. When you walk into a classroom, you don't remember the exact pattern on the carpet or how many ceiling tiles there are or how many lights are in the ceiling. You probably remember where you sat, what doors let in and out, the railings, stairs. These are things that we interact with and have to know in order to navigate the classroom, even down to the people in it. Because 24 seven, we're presented with a ton of stimulus and we have to filter out the things that aren't vital for moving forward. Yet with more modern games, it's easy to brush off all the things you're saying because they're just there to make it seem more believable. I know I'm bringing Zelda up a lot as an example, but look at just NPCs. You go into a town square and every person in that square is someone that has something to say to you. Something that is going to either help you with a clue or help you with a side story main mission or whatever. But in modern games, everyone just feels useless. Everyone's there just as a, as a visual representation of what a busy crowd looks like, as opposed to a living, breathing world that feels almost less realistic as a result. The last comparison I'll make on this subject is Dishonored. One of my favorite games has a very similar art style to Arcane. It has this painted world, CGI yet not really visual style to it that looks realistic yet grungy and stylistic in its own way. Yet it felt more real than a lot of games Bethesda made after the fact. Because the whole world, its setting, its visuals, its characters all lent itself to the way I was seeing and perceiving the game. Stylized, more basic graphics are just as important to video gaming as the crazy bombastic AAA things that we see. And if you think I'm losing my shit on this video, <laughs> wait until you see my gaming patches one, because oh my god, I've been waiting years to get that off my chest. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you all in the next one. Whoa, I'm out of here. Change the system. I pulled two old to get this out before Christmas. Holy fuck!